Greetings. My name is Ted Jander, composer in residence, worship ministry coordinator, and digital ministry administrator at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Hazelwood, Missouri. Today is Friday, but Sunday is coming. I welcome you from my home to your home as you join us for our family to family Good Friday Tenebrae worship. We now invite you into this blessed and most sacred time with God as we worship together online. We begin today in the name of God, the creator of life, and Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit who fills us with the light of Christ to shine as we live. Amen. We invite you now to give an offering to God. Several ways we can give are to offer our time to someone struggling or provide an offering to someone in need, all done for the love of others. If you would like to support our ministry, you can give online through our website. We can and will bring hope to the world. We join together in our offertory prayer. Lord God and giver of all good gifts, we are grateful for all the blessings of life that you give to us. Daily we are fed with good things, nourished by friendship and care, feasted with forgiveness, understanding, and hope. We ask now for your blessing of our offerings to help and serve those in need. May they be a great blessing, and may the light of Jesus Christ bring hope to the world. Amen.
Today is Friday, Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward, not in sickness and death. We, we are, are blessed with hope and joy. We know the love of God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Let us pray. Lord of life, help us to follow you through judgment this holy night, so that we might see and understand as you take our sins upon you. Teach us, lead us, save us. Help us to accept your judgment upon our sin, so that you can lead us through death to new life. Amen. Amen. Today is Friday. Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward not in fear and uncertainty. We are blessed with hope and joy. We know the love of God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Our first reading for today, Holy Friday, comes from the from the 19th chapter of St. John. And then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. And this was to fulfill what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Today is 
Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward, not in anxiety and stress. We, we are, are blessed with hope and joy. joy. We, we know, know the, the love of God, God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's God. Son. Let us pray. King of Kings, give us the wisdom to understand your reign and its meaning for our world. Help us to let go of power that destroys your kingdom on earth and receive your power of love. Lead us, give us understanding, comfort us. Show us your will for each of our lives and in our congregation. Teach us how to die with you. Amen. Our second reading for today, Holy Friday, comes from the 23rd chapter of St. Luke and the 19th chapter of St. John. <laughs> Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scriptures, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Today is Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward, not in doubt and mistrust. We are blessed with hope and joy. We know the love of God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Hi, welcome to Good Friday. This is the beautiful night when we go with Jesus to the cross. We look at all of the risks he's taken and because he loves us so much and we see the risks played out now as he dies on the cross. Let us pray. Oh God, fill us with a deep compassion and love as we walk with Jesus on this night. Help us to feel what it means to, to pour yourself out completely in your great love for others. Amen. We have two big kinds of risks tonight that Jesus takes. The first one is the human risk. Remember, he's both divine and human. And, and tonight we see Jesus the man as he comes into this story. And he comes through the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's the biggest risk of all. Because he's about to be arrested. And arrested by the Roman Imperial Empire. And could he have stopped the arrest? Of course he could have. Could he have run away? Of course. His disciples are armed with weapons. So could they have asked him to do something? They could have. In Matthew, Jesus turns to the Roman soldiers and everyone who is arresting him. And he says, do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send 12 legions of angels? Jesus could have done, in fact, he could have called the Calvary to Calvary. The risk is knowing that he can save himself, and as is human, choosing not to. But there's also a, a, a very high level of divine risk. When Jesus prays that night, remove this cup from me, removing this cup, this, this, this horrible thing that he has to go through if he wants to stay faithful to what God wants. God wants this world to be brought back into God's arms. And when he prays remove this cup, God does have the power to do it. And God has to refrain from using that heavenly power to stop this arrest, to stop the trials, to stop the suffering, and stop the death of God's only Son, Jesus. So Jesus will suffer, and God will suffer right along with him. The darkening clouds that we hear about in the stories that happen at the cross are God's divine pathos. It is the broken heart of God just weeping down. And the rending of the veil in, in the, uh, the Jewish temple, the Holy of Holies, and it, the, the rending of the veil is when, is when God mourns. Because in Jerusalem, when you are brokenhearted and you're crying out in mourning, you tear your garment. God is, like we hear about Jesus a few times here, God is that wonderful word in Greek, esplagkinise, God is gut-wrenching in empathetic pain right now. And the disciples risk as well. In Gethsemane, Jesus asked them, sit here with me while I pray. And he takes Peter and James and John, the one he seems to be closest to. And, and these are the beloved ones who have been with him from the very beginning in Galilee. They're the first ones he called three years ago. And they have been with him. And, and Jesus is distressed and he is agitated. He's maybe even having a panic attack because he says, I'm so deeply grieved even to death. Remain here with me and stay with me. Keep awake. But they can't. They don't. They fail. He says, remain here and stay with me because I need you. But soon they're all going to fail and flee when he's at the cross. And you know, when I think about it, we do too. It may not be as dramatic when I do it or when you do it, but we do. We fail, we fail, we flee, we, 
we fail to kind of hold up our end of this love story that we're involved in. And they do come back to Jesus, but it's much later. In Mark, we see that when the women find the tomb empty, they run home terrified and hide, and the men are already hiding in the upper room they have rented with it locked for fear. So this is Mark's gospel story. This is where they hide in the locked upper room after Jesus is arrested. You know, any time we're in any kind of, of deeper relationship, we're always risking something. You know how sometimes you might be a little worried about getting close to someone because they could hurt you or, or you know, certainly when you do, when you do covenant with another person, um, y- you, you risk a lot. When, when you have children and grandchildren, you risk so much because your heart is right out there on the line, isn't it? Especially with Jesus as our Savior, we have gone through a lot of risks, and this week and tonight, it's the worst. Because as we, as we empathize with him, as we see him suffering on this cross in excruciating pain, we see this story of, of, of constant risks, of terrible tragedy, and of great suffering and of loss, and also remarkable courage. And we see that this becomes the time of second chances. We see God weeping. The skies turn dark with the depth of God's sorrow. And ours, our sorrow is right there with Jesus. Entering this passion story with Jesus challenges you, challenges us all to face our fears and our failures. This isn't just a story about Jesus. It's a story about you and me and this love God has for us and our loving God back to face our faults, to address them, to face our fears, to face all the things that hold us back and that kind of tangle us up. A friend of ours always used to say, oh, what tangled webs we've wub. Are there people in your life that you've betrayed or denied or or condemned even? Um, You probably might have had those experiences yourself, someone doing to you. This is the story about second chances and third chances and fourth chances. This is the story of this incredible forgiveness and this love that comes from the very depth of the man, the very depth of the Son of God, and refuses to do anything else but to die. And we are with him to the end. And as we do this, we pray, each of us, that God will will move in us and in all those places in us that are unfinished or have failed or those places that hurt, that God will move in us and heal those places and forgive us and make us new in this miracle that's about to happen called forgiveness and called resurrection, the ultimate second chance. Amen. Today is Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward, not in defeat and loss. We We are are blessed with hope and joy. We know the love of God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Let us pray. Savior most holy, let us die with you so that we will be reborn. Crucify in us all that pulls us away from the cross where we find our salvation. Forgive us, save us, 
free us. Teach us to love you and your sacrifice for us. Teach us to carry your cross. Amen. Today is Friday, but Sunday is coming. We go forward, not with grief and sorrow. We are blessed with hope and joy. We know the love of God is outpoured on us through the blessing of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Our final reading for today, Holy Friday, comes from the 19th chapter of St. John. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified so that you, you may also believe, and this person's testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take the, away the body of Jesus. So Pilate gave him permission, and he came at night and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. And they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it, with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. We join together in the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.